Hello, everyone. This is the legend Mike Wilkerson, your host of Sooner Legends Podcast. And today I will be discussing Brent Venables and my outlook for the 2024 season. But before we dive into it, can I ask you to jump out, hit the like, subscribe, and turn on your post notification bell. That way you won't miss any college football or OU related content that I will be uploading in the future. And also it helps push the out algorithm of uh, YouTube. So let's start off by discussing Brent Venables. Uh, I see a lot of flack on uh, social media about Brent, but let's take a look back. Brent Venables comes to us from Clemson. He comes to a very gutted program after uh, you know who left. We ain't going to dive into that. But our program was very good. BV basically had to make a football team with tape scraps and make a meal. So we went six and seven in our uh, first year with Brent. Second year, we go 10 and two, which I think is, for, or actually 10 and three if you count the bowl game loss, but which I think. Brent is doing a fabulous job. Now, there's some things that need to be shored up. I'm not going to discuss that. You all know. So, but anyway, going from six and seven to 10 and three in season two, I think he did a fabulous job. Uh, yeah, we lost to Kansas and OSU, but that's old news. But look at his recruiting. He gets here. He puts on a top four recruiting class for his very first cycle. And since his time been here, he's been in the top 10 in recruiting. So he's recruiting at a high level. Yeah, we missed on some big fish. But have you ever thought about this? That maybe... They don't fit Brent's culture that he's building here at OU. Brent is looking for culture players, not prima donnas, not all about me, not the self-centered uh, player, if you will. He's looking for players to build this foundation, to make it and mold it into a beautiful house. Have you ever stopped and thought about, about it like that? Just because we miss on big five top five stars and big, uh, big fish in the portal, just before you take the social media and start complaining about your displeasure that we didn't get said player, Think to yourself, does this player fit Brent Venable's culture? Does this player fit Brent's scheme to building a winning program at OU that we are known for? That's my take. And as you know, to build, I, I, I look at Brent's culture like I said, as building a house. In order to have a house, you got to have a strong foundation built to support that house and to make it weather storms or whatever it may be. That's what Brent is, in essence, is doing with OU's program. And it's starting to come to fruition. Patience, people. Patience with y'all is a virtue. You got to be patient. Let Brent, we we got four players left out of the Lincoln Air, Lincoln Riley era recruiting. Danny Stutzman, Ethan Downs, Jalil Farouk, and uh, the other one, the other one, the other one. Uh, y'all hop in the comments and tell me. But there's four players that's left from the uh, <coughs> from the Riley era. 
So after these four are gone this coming up year, Brent will have all of his players that he recruited along with Todd Bates and Jay Belay. We still got Smitty. So just be patient with BV. Quit calling for his head. He's doing a great job here. Yeah, we dropped two bowl games. But all the, the one we played last year against Florida State, the cheez Bowl and the Alamo Bowl, what would we have got had we won it? Wouldn't have got a natty. Wouldn't have. To me, these bowl games that OU plays in, that's not in the college football playoff, all they are is just a scrimmage for the spring game. All you get out of it, if you win it, is bragging rights and a trophy. How many trophies do we have in the Switzer Center? A bunch. And believe me, folks, Brent is going to be putting some trophies at Switzer Center. But you got to be patient. Patience is the key. Because Brent is building this thing from the foundation up. So that's all I got on Brent. Thank you, Brent coming back to OU and bringing our culture back. God bless you. Now for my outlook on the 2024 season. Woo, it's a rough one. They gave us they gave us the gauntlet in the SEC schedule next year. I feel that if we go I've set the floor at eight and four and then the ceiling at nine and three. If we do either of those with the schedule we have, it'll be a great year in that SEC. Now, could there be surprises and we do better than that? This is OU. I've been up watching OU since 1970. Anything's possible. But I'm just looking at the teams we play out of the SEC in our first year. And I'm look, looking at it and I'm going, whoa, pretty, pretty rough. But still, I think that, like I said, I've got the ceiling set at eight and four. At the floor, or the floor at eight and four and the ceiling nine and three. Now, once again, my outlook. The recruiting, we got David Stone coming in, Nigel Smith, Jaden Jackson, Danny Okoye. Uh, on the other side of the ball, we got Daniel Akinkumini. We got Eddie Pierre Louis. We got some, we got some guys in this recruiting class, and twenty all twenty seven of them signed before noon on signing day. So my outlook for next year is OU is going to have have the uh, have it to do. However, I I think the outlook is pretty bright. I'm not per se hooking up my mask and hooking it to my hopium tank and saying we're going to go undefeated and playing our first SEC, SEC championship. No. It could happen. It could very well happen. But that's all I got for today. Uh, hop down in the comments and tell your boy, the legend, what you think. I take all comments negative. Good. But tell me what you feel. And uh, we'll discuss it. Until then, this is the Sooner Legend. We'll see you on the backside. God bless.